Welcome to in 5 minutes. We will write a recursive function to find nth term of Fibonacci series. Uh, the series is given as follows that we already know. Its first two terms are fixed as 1 and 1 and the next terms are addition of previous two numbers. So third term is addition of 1 plus 1, 2. Then fourth term is addition of 1 plus 2, 3. Fifth term is addition of 2 and 3, 5 and so on. So in general we can, we can set two rules. If any nth term of Fibonacci series is addition of n minus 1 term plus n minus 2 term. That is for every n greater than 2. But it has a fixed value of 1 for n is 1 and n is 2. That is if n is 1 and 2 that is first and second term is fixed as 1. Now using this same concept we will be writing our own recursive function now. See the entire program over here. We have written a function that has n as a parameter that is which term we want to get. The function returns an integer as a Fibonacci term and the function name written is Fibo. The first statement is a fixed statement that is if n is 1 or n is 2 returns 1. Otherwise it returns the answer of Fibo of n minus 1 plus Fibo of n minus 2. In main we have defined n to input the term number that is n and v to get the answer back that is an actual term that is nth terms. For example, if n is given as 5, the answer will be 5. If the n is given as 6, the answer will be 8, that is 6 term. Then scanf inputs the value and function is called with n as a parameter, supplied to the function and then function does some calculation and returns the answer back to v. Now assuming n equal to 5, let's see how it is going to work. I am going to explain the process but the process is not required for if students to understand how it is going to work. As the suppose value of n was equal to 5, so function receives value 5 over here and the first if is false, so the else part works that says return FIBO of 4 that is n minus 1 and n minus 2 that is FIBO of 4 and FIBO of 3. So this call will be split into two parts as FIB of 4 plus FIB of 3. I am writing in short. Answer of this evaluated will be given back to the first function call that is in main. Now since it is a function call, now FIB of 4 will be called again n receives value as 4. Let us talk about the left part only for timing. Now again if is false, so else part works, it says return FIB of, since n is 4, returns FIB of 3 and FIB of 2. So it is a return the answer of FIB of 3 plus FIB of 2. Again let us see the left part over here. The n value received will be, recursive function will be called from here and n value received will be 3. This time it will be split into again two parts because again first if is false, else part works. Return the answer of FIB of 2 plus FIB of 1. Now FIB of 1 and FIB of 2, since it will be given as 1 or 2 over here, they will return the value as 1, 1. So value generated over here will be 1 and 1. These two will be added and will be returned back from here to the left side call that is answer will be given as 2 over here for left part. Then again FIB of 2 that is 2 will be passed over here and answer generated will be just 1. These 2 and 3, 2 and 1 will be added and this answer will be given back to the left side function called that is FIB of 4 that will be answer as 3. Still the right part of the expression, the first expression is left which is FIB of 3 which will be again split into two parts as FIB of 1 plus FIB of 2 which are nothing but each 1, each as value 1 which will be added and given back to the right part of the first expression as 2. Now these 3 and 2 will be added and returned back to the first function called from where you call it in main. So main will receive the value of 3 plus 2 that is 5 as a return answer which is nothing but the fifth term of Fibonacci series. Again as we discussed in all the programs we have to just remember how to write function, how to write main, how to call the function, how to get the return answer and print the answer. You are not supposed to remember the entire process how it is working in the background. Thank you.